I-N-S-T-A-L-L, is 69 Old Red Mill Road, Rensselaer, New York, 12144. In what year did you join the U.S. Navy? Oh, Lordy, 1943. Did you enlist or were you drafted? Uh, kind of half a board and told them I was going to enlist in the Navy when I was 18. And I went across the river and joined the Navy and left that same night. How long did you serve and during what period? I served from January 16th of 43 to February 16th of 46. Was it during a time of peace or war? Pe war. When you enlisted, how old were you? 18. Where, you, where were you living when you enlisted? Uh, where was I living? Rensselaer, New York. At home with my mother. Did you have any prior experiences at sea? Never. Prior, prior to enlisting, what did you do in your civilian life? Pardon? Prior to enlisting, what did you do in your civilian life? High school. High school. Were you employed? Never. Were you a Boy Scout? I was for a short length of time. I think I finally ended up being a tender, tender scout or something, but I grew out of that. When you joined the Navy, what were your first experiences? Well, as a young kid, all I was thinking of about going to war. <laughs> Did you go to boot camp? I went to boot camp, yes. Where? Samson, New York. Why don't we go off camera? What were your impressions of boot camp? I loved it. I loved boot camp because we went up there, we run and run and run, and we play basketball. And when I was in boot camp in January, I think we had more snow than... You could shake a stick at, and we'd done all our drill and everything in the, well, they had a big arena up there indoors, and that was, I loved it. Where did you go after boot camp? More training, leave, ship? No. When after boot camp, I went to Norfolk, Virginia, to the Naval Hospital, and they wanted to train me to be a Marine uh, corpsman, and I said, no way. I said, put me to sea, so they shipped me over to the other side of the, base. What was the destroyer escort which you served on? Name and numbers. The name of the escort was a DE-257 USS Smart. How long did you serve on the ship? Two years. What was your first, expre first experience of a destroyer escort? My first experience what? What was your first experience of a destroyer escort? I still didn't get you. What was your first experience of a destroyer escort? Well, just like any other kid, you'd, you had to take and like it. You were in the service, and this was something that you went along with and thought it was great. Did the ship appear large or small? It was about the same size as this DE, small ship. What was your first at sea experience? Sea experience? Seasick. <laughs> I was seasick for about three days, but then after that I got over it, and that was it. Were you a plank owner? Was I a point? Plank owner. A pl yes, yes, well, I was a plank owner, yeah. Did you take your ship out on a shakedown cruise? I took the ship out to Bermuda on a shakedown cruise. Did everything work as planned during the shakedown? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where did the ship go next? Our first trip was a convoy to Casablanca, I think. What theaters of duty did the ship sail? What? What theaters of duty did the ship sail? I didn't get that. Um, theaters of duty, like Atlantic, Atlantic Pacific. Pacific. What theaters of duty? Theaters. What? I, I don't know what that's for. What areas? Atlantic, Pacific. Oh, Atlantic. Oh, what? All right, Atlantic. What battle campaigns did the ship participate in when you were on board? Well, we got a, a star for the USG-40 convoy that went to the Mediterranean without losing the ship, the first one. Can you give us a rough idea of other places you sailed to and the times involved? Well, first we went to Casablanca, and our next one was, uh, I would convoy over to Algiers. No, it was Oran, then Algiers, then the T Tinas, and then, then the Palermo. I think that's about our, our limit on that. When, when, when you first board a ship, what was your rating and rate? I was seaman... Second class, I think it was. 
How did you learn about the shipboard routine? How did I sh learn about the shipboard routine? Port routine? Shipboard routine. Hmm, I just picked it up and learned it, I guess. Do you spend any time as a mess cook? Oh, yes. <laughs> that was always a, a, a duty of all of us had to take turns at being mess cooks. Did you advance to, to a higher rate? I advanced to seaman first class, and I went up to be a coxswain, which is now a boatswain mate third class. What shipboard equipment did you operate? Well, the whale boat. Uh, we also had to operate the winch up forward and the anchors. When we dropped anchors, we had I had to operate them as a coxswain. And, oh boy, that big wheel up front. Used to put the line on and wheel it in. Anything? Windless. What? The windlass? Windless, that was, that's it, the windlass. Anything notable about the equipment? No, I don't think so. Did it always work? I so sure far did, yes. Was it easy to operate? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were there any tricks of the trade which made your work easier? Did you have to kick the equipment to get it to work? Was there any? Any tricks of the trade? Tricks of the trade? I don't think so. You just learned up there and learned what you were doing all the time, that's all. Did the equipment have to be cleaned and maintained? Always. Always had to be cleaned and maintained constantly, right. Was it easy to maintain? Yes, they were. <laughs> Grease and oil and stuff. Besides operating equipment, what was your rate also involved in the performance of certain other duties? What was my rate involved in? The performance of certain other duties. Well, we always had the whale boat duty, which when we come into port and drop the whale boat, you always had your turn of uh, run the liberty in the shore. Did you provide support to other crew members and officers? Did I what? Provide support to other crew members and officers. Yeah. What watches and watch sections did you routinely stand? Uh, what watches? Well, I always stood a gun watch every night, and uh, I think I was in section one, which we stood what four on and. We rotated, four on, four off, three on, eight off, or something like that, right? I can't exactly remember, but we rotated our watches. And I had to stay in uh, gangway watch when you come into port. There was always a, a boats and our coxswain had to stay in that. What were your specific duties during the watch? Shouldn't say. <laughs> to watch the drunken sailors come back on board. <laughs> or make sure nobody else got on board. At sea, though, as the gun crew, what, what did you do on the gun crew? On the gun crew, I started off as a loader, then they ended up as a trainer. There was a pointer and a trainer. On, I was on the 1.1, 1 .1, right. How did the watch sections vary based on the readiness condition, two, three, or four sections? How did the watch system? The watch sections vary based on the readiness condition. The, we were always on ready. One watch was always on ready on board ship. Is that what he's asking? Well, like wartime cruising, when you went, to, like when you were going to Bermuda, or did you stand uh, uh, like four on and twelve off? Or? No, it was four. It was four on, four off. But then you rotated your mess when it come to mess the dog time. Watches. Dog watches. You had to go t two on and two off. Then it just kind of rotated around that. Did you favor one watch over another? For example, did you hate the mid watch? It doesn't matter. I was always one. To didn't matter where I always got my sleep in there. What hardships did you encounter while standing watch? Cold weather. <laughs> really cold weather. Were you cold, hot, wet? Did the watches get boring, tiring or boring? No, they were never boring, but they were cold. Did you have the same basic duties during general quarters or did your duties change? Yes, yes, I did have the same. I was How long would you remain at general quarters? It's mm, usually 12, if we went on, tw usually 12 hours. At 6 o'clock at night if we went on, it was always till 8 in the morning or something, right. How frequently would you be called to general quarters? I'd say probably uh, twice every trip, which the trip usually took us 22 days. Did you perform general quarter drills often? Every other day or so, yes. How long would it take to man general quarters? 
I have no idea, but it wasn't too long. I tell you that. What specific general quarters exercise did you get involved with? General quarters? Uh, I was on a 1.1 gun, yes. The more you drilled, the performance improved? Oh, yes. Oh, certainly, the more you'd done something, the more it improved. During the drills, did everything always go as planned? Not really, no. A lot of, had, a lot of times I had accidents with uh, dropping equipment and dropping, you know, like, especially on a 20 millimeter gun, they're always dropping them big canisters down and, and losing them. What special C details were you involved with? Special C detail? I was up forward and I was a coxswain and Well, it was just regular duty up there, that's all. I was always up forward. What did you do when the ship moored and anchored? Well, moored and anchored. Well, I used to try to throw the heaving line over to the shore <laughs> so we could take other lines to... And you threw the heaving line over to the, the low, smaller line and the big line and tie the ship off to the dock. I could always do that. That was one of my chores. Did you have any active roles during refueling or replenishment details? Uh, when you look at it, we, everybody had to get involved in refueling because usually you shot the, your heaving line over with the gun and then they threw the line back and everybody had to man the lines and you just went down and turned around and kept going, you know, to pull the lines across. Any interesting experiences during these activities? Mm, well, always was interesting when we're refueling, you got a, uh, a couple of new films maybe at the time, or you could get uh, a little uh, pokey bait and some ice cream. Did heavy seas and bad weather make these exercises more difficult? Well, usually those heavy seas, they didn't refuel. They tried not to refuel in heavy seas. They always tried to pick a little bit better days to refuel. When the ship was at sea for an extended period of time, how frequently would, you, would refueling and replenishment take place? I'd say we refueled probably once every seven or ten days. Did, did you ever experience an emergency breakaway? Yes, we did have an emergency breakaway once, right. And that, whoop, everything just broke and you just, the, when there's an emergency breakaway, you just go up and have a knife and you cut the lines and things and just let everything go and don't worry about it. Did you ever ride on a bosun's chair during a ship-to-ship -ship transfer? No, I didn't, but I helped dunk a few guys going across. <laughs> well, on the stray escorts, who were your COs? On the escort? Yeah, who were your COs? Who were they? The names, you mean, or who, what rank? Names? Who was their name? Uh, I just can't remember. I know there was, uh, we had Lieutenant Yeoman, and uh, our commander was a uh, wetman. He was, he was lieutenant, too. Gertie was one. I don't know who she was, but we used to call her Gertie. <laughs> what leadership style did they use? What? What leadership style did they use? They were good. We always had good officers, right. Were they by the book? Uh, half and half. Was the CO detached or very personable? He was very personable. He was always down with us, right. Did you have any first-hand experience in officer's country? An officer country? You mean up in the wardrobe or anything? Uh, not really, but I do have some pictures of them, you know, in a wardrobe, and I was never... What was your overall impression of the quality of other officers? I think they're all good officers we had, really. Um, anything specific about your division officers? Any what about my division officers? Anything specific about your division officers? He was a regular fella. He stripped right down to the waist and was right with us all the time, you know. He was right there and raring to go. Did you observe a contrast between the CO's leadership style and the leadership style of the XO? What was that again? Did you observe a contrast between the CO's leadership style and the leadership style of the XO? No, I never did. What about your chiefs or leading petty officers? They were great, right? Because our chiefs are usually fellows who worked their way up the ladder and were right along with us and just worked their way in to that office. Were they knowledgeable? Were th were they old salts? No, they were young fellows who worked their way up. The first boatswain made out was an old salt, yes. Then that, he was only there for one trip, and then 
he got transferred off, so probably to another DE for another one trip. Do you have any leadership responsibilities? Myself? Yes, I had uh, the 1.1 crew was my leadership on that, and uh, I had a section up forward, which we had three sections and I had one section. How did you learn your leadership skills? Just from being aboard ship. Did you ever have any discipline problems? How did you deal with these problems? No, we never had, no, no, we never did. Any comment on storms or rough weather? In rough weather, any comments? We always had a lot of trouble in rough weather, really. I, I, I said one time uh, we had to have the, uh, what do you call it, the militia. Oh, where they come in and had to put the hatches up that, that blew in on us. We had a couple of hatches come off up on deck, which in turn come down, and we had to flood a couple of compartments with the water from up on deck. We had one time, yes, and we had to use bilge pump, bilge pumps to pump them out. How did your ship roll? <laughs> so you'd fall the hell out of these bunks. What it about rolled. What, what was it? 70 degrees, is that the farthest you can go? 70 degrees, right. What about everyday activities like eating and sleeping? Very good. I thought we ate and slept very good. Uh, during, during, rough during rough weather. Oh, during rough weather? It's according to how the cooks fell. Really, we, we ended up with, uh, I can't say it on here, horse cock sandwiches and things like that. That's baloney, right? That's baloney. <laughs> Did your ship participate with convoy duty? Was the ship what? Did your ship participate with convoy duty? We done all convoy duty, strictly convoy duty, right. How many convoy duties did your ship participate in? We went across the ocean 11 times with convoys, 11 different convoys. Where do these convoys go? Casablanca, Oran, Algiers, Bizerti, Palermo, that's only five. We must have had a couple of ones in between. How long did it take to get there? It took us about 22 days across the ocean. Was the converging monotonous and grueling? Not really. I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time in the Navy. I understand that your ship, the USS Smart, was involved with several anti-submarine actions. Would you care to relate your personal experiences? Well, personal experiences, well, sometimes you're laying in the bed bunk at night and I never did sound the general quarter and you heard ba-boom, ba-boom. That got you kind of shook up and then finally general quarters would go when you'd, when you'd go. They dropped the, the ash cans off the back before, when they got the sound right away instead of waiting for general quarters. That was scary. I understand that your ship, the USS Smart, was involved with several anti-aircraft actions during US G-40. Would mm -hmm. you care to your experiences during this action? Well, my experience with that night, I was kind of scared. And when you start bang, 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 and I'm thinking that seeing these planes coming at you, you know, you have to uh, get kind of scared. The only other thing I had there, we had a cook standing there, and we had a potato bin right under the 1.1, and he was throwing potatoes at the airplanes. I don't know why, but that's what he was doing. <laughs> what about meals on board the ship? I thought they were good. I thought we had good meals aboard ship. But you, but you ran short of potatoes, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was odd that night. And he still swears to this day we see him that he was throwing them. What about the usage of water? Did you have an unlimited supply? No, we didn't have a non -way. We had a kind of, uh, you take a shower, you didn't get in wet down and soak yourself down and wet down and get out. Were there other personal items in short supply? Uh, no, usually everybody uh, kept their own. We had a pretty good little store aboard ship. Any humorous stories involving shipboard life? Any stories about what? Humorous stories involving shipboard life. Well, not really. You know, Dean, when you're in the john taking a poop, every now and then the ship rolls too much and you get a wet fanny <laughs> from the water coming back up instead of going out. <laughs> that was humorous. Did you ever send any junior sailors on wild goose chases or snipe hunts? Always. What they were, I don't know now. I forget that. 
and when you weren't working or standing watch, what pastimes were available? Well, pastimes were strictly playing cards, I guess. And if they had a movie, they'd show the movies. And if you wasn't on watch, you could go to the movie down. But and they always held the movie in the mess hall, so you couldn't go away. It was on mess duty. You had to wait till afterwards. Were snacks and treats available? Well, you had to get your own snacks from the ship store if you wanted them, and they were pretty much available all the time. Yes. Did your ship ever have swim call? Always. Did that you have was... any field day activities? And what kind of activities? Field day activities? Yes, we always, if we went to Algiers or Orlando, we always left them on the shore and uh, had baseball, played baseball with another, or softball instead of base, softball with another ship. What about holidays at sea, Thanksgiving, Christmas? Well, they were just routine holidays. We always, they, our cooks always try to, you know, get the best of